frontier is defined as uncharted territory by land or notion. Those who chart that territory tell a story. The past illustrates the blueprint for the present. How things are and how they've evolved. From land to water, we are challenged to border that new frontier. A frontier the outdoorsman knows like no other. Author Gary Lewis works his way along that edge of where discoveries, failures, and achievements have written the story of the sportsman. Yes! Yes! From state to state, continent to continent, the stories told create the foundation of the present, and they lay the framework for the future. Through the muzzle fire and on the stone are stories from the edge. Water is the most important thing as far as Indians are concerned, because that's, that's life. The past is written, the present is here, and this is Frontier Unlimited. Catherine Monchamp, Octavio Bestbeck, and Lewis rode motorcycles from Wild Horse Harley Davidson and Bend. Trey Ardis flew in from Oklahoma. Mike Alquist drove down from Kent, Washington. We were at Zim's Bra House in the Dalles when our smallmouth bass fishing trip went off the rails. A fuel train had just derailed at Mosier and I-84 was closed in both directions between the Dalles and Hood River. The crew's guide, Drew Sharns, of Hood River Adventures was on the way. He managed to get across the bridge and come east on the Washington side. Michael Gibney was pulling our second boat, but he got stuck in the traffic jam at Hood River. The crew had to come up with a new game plan. We'll see if we can start uh, pounding the, the shorelines and looking for smallmouth that are eating crawdads. Don't say the number that 12 plus 1 equals. <laughs> okay, so that, and then <laughs> hopefully nobody has a banana. Uh, nope. Well, in this small area, there's about every species of fish you could want. Because even uh, within an hour and a half, we have muskies. I used to guide it for a lot for muskies. So you got a tiger muskie up in Lake Mayfield and smallmouth, and you got trout fishing. And... We were fortunate enough to host a war hero, Trey Ardis works with Honored American Veterans Association to help other veterans returning from war zones. So I'm looking for is a decent drop, but not too deep. You're not gonna find the bass next to a 60 foot deep wall, but not too shallow because the weeds really come up bad this time of year. Even though the smallmouth are in weeds, there's lots of places to fish where they're not. And there's so many crayfish in this river that is one of their prime sources of food. So it's always a good place to start. We're gonna start with some crawdad crankbaits and a couple of soft plastics, so. Smallmouth bass were brought here by railroad men, and they, they came here from the uh, Midwest, and they brought them out here in buckets on the trains, and they let them go in different places, and uh, that's how smallmouth bass got here. The, the fish in this river, this is one of the best smallmouth fisheries in the country now, and uh, any day you're gonna be over fish that are big enough to break the state record. This is a tremendous smallmouth fishery. The strike zone might be within a five foot slot off the edge of the bank, but if we're in pulling down it, we'll be pulling it down the strike zone the whole entire time. Yeah. But there's a lot of fish, but there's also a ton of water. So it's like a big ocean. Like when you're not on them, yeah. you're not on them. And then when you yeah. get on them, usually there's a ton in the same area. So to find a big fish, the best thing to do is cover a lot of water. All right. This one here you too, So what we want to do is she we want won. to uh, <laughs> kind of spread ourselves out a little bit. Just like I was saying a minute ago, we want to just take this guy, cast it straight up. You can have a pretty steady retrieve, 
And as we go to find what they want, sometimes we'll go faster, sometimes we'll go slower, but this is a crankbait. So as long as you are winding and it's moving, it's fishing. Always check your drag, never trust your guide. There you go. And then when we're fishing with a lot of people, one very important rule is line follows the tip of the rod. So a lot of times I want to always kind of cast straight overhead because that way you know where the next person is. You start casting at an angle, then all of a sudden you can be catching somebody. I think you just got my shirt. Good job. I just got Good your shirt job. And your hair. Oh, just my shirt, and my hair. You'll catch it just because you lose one. <laughs> the barb's not as important as you think. No, and it's not for the fish. It's for us. Because the bigger fish. Did you get a bite? I thought I did. Yeah. 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 If you broke a lure off because you set the hook so hard, I'd be proud. Good shot. They hang right in those rocks, right, right on there. the edge, yeah. I'm going to give you a grub on a jig head. And what I've done is I have actually dyed the tail end of that grub in some chartreuse because a lot of times the crayfish points of their uh, claws will actually look a little bit orange or a different color. So we want to throw this guy into the rocks. Okay. And I want to put it in the water too. So. We'll, as long as that tail's moving, it looks good, but a lot of times I'll give it a little twitch right. so it'll look like a crawdad escaping. Ooh, can... ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> yeah, so before I could let go of the grub, we had a fish on. You see them, pop them up, and let them go. That's going to happen, but it's about having fun and being safe. So there we go, I want to pinch that barb as well. In some cases, bass bound for elsewhere were released into the creeks and rivers because trains derailed or were delayed. The hardy fish thrived wherever it found cool, flowing water. Good work, all right. Nice. That's a beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice, Tava. Stick your thumb right down there and squeeze hard. Okay. There you go. Drop your hands so that way everybody can see how pretty the fish is. He's gorgeous. Well, he don't look like a, a the other bass, though, huh? Oh. He's beautiful. And he gets put back? Yep. That was awesome. They're a lot bigger than I thought they were going to be. This segment is brought to you by Robertson Ford in Bend, Oregon. It's very common to catch them five and a half, six. Somebody actually caught an eight pounder last year. Oh, nice fish. Oh, nice. Awesome. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. He's bigger than the last one, huh? <laughs> Just a little tug, and then you feel your line get tight. And then if I do like he said and just keep the tip up, then it stays really, really tight. Do you want to go ahead and throw a barb on that one with a grub, Gary? Uh, sure. Because we seem to have found a bait they like. Yeah, right. Pause every once in a while. And then if you get bit, then just hit it hard. You got it. Smallmouth make a living on the crawdads, baby shads, salmon, and steelhead oh, smolts, <laughs> and other things that taste good with lemon right. and butter. It was a good hook set. See, you got it all the way through his oh, lip. Yeah. So you can see it's a hard lip, and it's just like somebody piercing your ear. You got to uh -huh. hit them hard enough to get that hook through their lip. And that's one of the or biggest. Else they get. They'll, they'll come right up the boat, and then they jump up there and spit it back at us. And that's what we keep on seeing is they, uh, they're good acrobats. <laughs> the other thing you'll notice about the smallmouth, too, is that the bottom you catch it on, a lot of times, is what the bars look like. So when you have a lot of bars and like a lot more gravel than the sandier, a lot of times will be a lot greener. Oh. So they're kind of, they're chameleons like that. Good. And I just toss them in head first because you know what happens then is in the air launches in their gills okay. and they're good to go. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> so now there's a bunch of grass here and the smallmouth love living in there but with what we're fishing with we might as well get out of it and go someplace that won't have so many weeds in it. Up on up there. The sweet spot seemed to be about eight feet off the bank and the transition point between shallow water and the drop off. Oh yeah. All right. Smallmouth number one. All right. Open the bale for him. Give a little slide. Might be my first smallmouth I've ever caught. Awesome. Stick it right down there and squeeze pretty good. They all have a different coloration. Beautiful. I caught the largemouth, but I haven't caught any small that I know of. Going 
the rule of line follows the tip of the rod, that works with landing a fish too. If you take your rod tip up over my head with some slack, yes. it'll bring that fish right into the net right where I'm at. Okay. So, all right, I want to actually grab some pliers, not to hurt them. There you go. Right, here he is. Cute little guy. You go ahead and let him go. The best bites were found around the rocky points where the currents picked up and downstream in the foam lines. Wherever there was a bit of shade, there could be a bass resting next to a boulder. There he is. Yeah, they're all a little different. Oh, look at the one with him. There's oh, one with him. Gary, cast oh, right yeah, there. Cast right next to him. You, oh. It's all right. He's probably somebody else will grab it. A lot of times it's a sign of them being spawning. But if you see another fish and somebody's ready with the lure, 80% of the time you'll catch both fish. <laughs> Six inches, four inches. There you go. Just get a little slack. Uh, we need to get a picture of this one, though. Yes, he's a like it's this. It's not for the show, right? Just for the Just personal. for he. Just for buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. Makes me feel large. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, oh my goodness, this makes me feel about seven feet tall. I'm originally from Oklahoma. I grew up doing a lot of pond fishing for largemouth bass. We'd eat it. I, I'm a fish eater. I like to catch fish some, but I like to eat them more. It's a good hook set. See, you got it all the way through his oh, lip. Yeah. So you can see it's a hard lip, and it's just like somebody piercing your ear. I caught a largemouth, but I haven't caught any small. We got good food and current going past it, and that nice slower water in the back side of it. And some bubble lines. Yup. Foam is home. <laughs> right. There she blows. This is your salmon bait. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Well, they must be talking about the derailment while they're going. You see how slow they're going. They're um, probably going to have to stop once they get down to where the, the derailment is. But man, that causes all kinds of problems up and down the line when the train goes off the tracks. That's a big deal. Inland pelicans are there, aren't they? Oh. Well, we had a first fish of the day that was hooked on this bait. But what it's done is you'll get a different type of bite. You'll get a reaction strike because as it comes by the fish quickly, he's either got to bite it or not bite it. Now, is this a, a male or a female? Because you said the males was long and skinny. Yeah, and this, the... possibly a male. And uh, flip it over here. I think that's a male, yeah. So it does, a lot of times a female, you'll actually, and this could be a female that's not spawned yet, but you'll see two little dots right there in the abdomen. Those eyes are red. Yeah, they got yeah. red eyes. Yep. Oh, really? That's one of the things about these smallmouth is they're, they're, a lot of times their eyes will be red. When you're trolling, you don't have to set that hard because you want them to get tangled. They're coming up behind you and grabbing it. So let, wait till he shakes his head a few times and then give it a set. Okay. You still want to set it, but you want to let him get tangled up in it first. Because a lot of times they'll barely grab it and you'll just yank it right out of the very end of their mouth. This fat belly head back here for me, a bunch of crawdads. Feels pretty tight. Uh, you know, 
Tip up. There you go. Now start reeling forward. It's a good fish because this guy's looking pretty good. Oh, oh man. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Good job. All right, Lord. Oh, yeah. He's caught. He's oh, caught. Squeeze on his lip. That's where this oh, right little sandpaper is there. <laughs> How do you like that? Oh, he's a pretty one, huh? Yeah, they're all pretty to me. I've never seen an ugly fish. That was heavy. It felt a lot heavier than the puny size that it is. <laughs> so naturally when a fish gets hooked, he wants to get whatever's hooking him out of his mouth. So he spit up his Oh look at it's probably it looks like a nice little salmon smolt. You can see just like the grain on the fish. So this guy and that's a real fish. That's yeah that's that's been in the belly. So what happens oh my God. he got hooked and he regurgitate everything trying to get it out of uh, yeah. his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So should we refeed him? Uh, we'll just no. throw that over. Now see how beautiful that one's got a lot of yeah, different bars on it. They're all in the black bass family, but a lot of it's water temperature and uh, currents. Like smallmouth is a more northern fish. You'll find them all the way up into Canada. Largemouth do really well in low oxygenated water, really hot water. Got one. All right, fish on! This one followed it all the way to the boot. I know. They get bigger as they get closer to the camera. <laughs> Good fish, good fish. Oh man! Oh, oh man. man! That's another good fish. Oh man! That's a pretty fish too. You, know, you see, that's got the spawning scars on the belly as well. So. Oh yeah. I think half these fish are done spawning. And yeah, Very it, nice. It like a sandier bottom, a lot of times has less. Um, I found it'll have less stripes. One that's in more of a rocky, multicolored bottom. The bigger oh. fish will come out. Nothing likes the sunshine. Made for these. Uh, waters and living in the rocks and every one of them is different. So what we're trying to do here with this one is make it look like a, a little baby salmon that's just been nailed by an osprey and uh, his back is broken and it's just kind of flipping around on the surface. In the evening when the sun goes down the fish come up. So they're more likely to go for a top water bait. And this is a lot more exciting. And sometimes it's the right way to catch a, a bigger bass. But you gotta give them some uh, protein potential out there. So that's what we're gonna try to do. I believe in it, I believe, but I haven't got a grab yet. I'm, I'm doing it the way I know to do it. Casting it out, letting it sit, and then chugging it. They're supposed to be coming up and eating it, but they're not. Lewis and crew talked about railroads, crude oil, and the river while they burned ethanol free up and down the Columbia from spot to spot. The bigger fish will come out. Nothing likes the sunshine. You know, morning, dusk, middle of the day, you're gonna catch numbers. What I'm trying to do is get right on the transition line. I know there's a shelf where it goes from shallow to deep, and it looks like it's happening pretty fast there. So what I try to do is cast out and then let it sit for like three seconds and then give it a chug and then let it sit again. And uh, the more you can tantalize the fish, uh, the better. And um, man, I'm trying real hard. <laughs> Coaxed him up to the top. Whoa, yes, yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we did get a double. That one's like, that's the one we wanted. Top water. Yeah. Fish of the day. Yes, Gary. yes. And that. he was, it was just a little swirl too. Oh, uh, because they suck it under. That yeah. thing was four pound back. I like it. This is why I go fishing for smallmouth bass. Because you can catch a fish like this any day on the river here and bigger, pretty, pretty fish. Look how camouflaged this fish is. Made for these uh, waters and living in the rocks. And every one of them is different. They got the mean little eye that they look at you with and the tongue is like sandpaper. That's why I like these fish. In the early springtime, all the big fish are feeding before the small fish, and sometimes you'll catch 30, 40, and they'll all be that size. And you won't see a small fish because they're not out of dormancy yet. 
way. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. By morning, the road was clear again, and a little smoke lingered on the water. They headed west of the launch and drove to the mouth of Rock Creek. No reason to do the exact same thing with everybody, where yesterday I was really just trying to get some fish in the boat. So now that we know that works, we want to try to find the ringer, what gets us the bigger fish in the boat. Well, I'm looking for a, a drop off that's not too deep. Like right now, I'm in 21 feet. If I was casting at the bank in 60 feet, it tells me that you know a lot of bass probably won't be holding there because they can't move in and out as much. See, he's running sideways. Yes, you are. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, no, you still going? It's a good come one. Here, come here. No, come here. You need to be right here. Oh, okay. Oh. Take the tip out the side. Outside. 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 There on. you go. Outside the boat. There you go. Oh, oh. Hey. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, my God. There you go. Oh, All I'm right. shaking. It's look a gosh it. darn good one. Oh man! Oh my gosh! Now turn around. Look at my. Look at that. That look is a that. great Columbia River smallmouth. It's got the stripes oh, there. God, the beautiful bars. That's a big fish. Exactly what we wanted. Check that out. All right, here. <laughs> Set that right in front of your shirt like that. Lewis and crew caught a few more fish. Sweet. That was what we were looking oh. for. On plastic crawfish imitations, which are made from crude oil, and they let them go. Bass fishing. 